you know, you don't think leaders hold parties. But I think celebration is a huge part of life. Leaders sometimes think of leadership is so serious. But leaders can party. And so the first thing we did was held a party for our street and we invited everybody. Now, we, we really had a lot of drugs on our street at that point. We had about half the neighbors come to our party. Most of them had never met each other because they were scared that the other person was a drug dealer. But what they found out that Sunday afternoon, or Saturday afternoon, was that most of the neighborhood wasn't drug dealers. We had a um, PhD in linguistics on our block, worked at UT, just kind of eccentric, living in St. John's. We had a Greek and retired Greek and Latin teacher. We had an engineer from Dell, and we had a crack dealer, and we had a single mom, and we had, you know, we had a pastor. We had the whole mix of people. But that one party transformed <coughs> our block, transformed our street. And I began to see people crossing the street and meeting each other, and a light bulb came on in my head, and I thought, relationship. When people get to know each other, problems start getting solved. So we began to do more and more in the neighborhood, and other people heard about our parties and said, we'd like to uh, have a party in our house. And I'm going to show you a picture a little later of a, of a, of a particular party. But um, an elderly black woman who considered herself the historian of St. John's. It's a very historic, over 100-year-old neighborhood. I'm not going to go into history, but it's a very important neighborhood to the African-American community. But she wanted a whole block party with a Hispanic neighbor up the street. And I remember meeting with them. And we spent three hours deciding whether hot dogs or hamburgers. Hot dogs or hamburgers. And these women were scared to death. And what I realized was they were really smart about certain things that you and I don't know much about. But project planning, which we do every day, you do in this class, and we are trained to do project planning, they just hadn't had that chance to learn how to do that. And so I had to work through it very slowly, make it theirs very slowly. They pl finally planned this party. We had about 75 people come to this great little block party. And a, I mean, some uh, Hispanic people came from another street over to the party. And they said to me, they said, we'd like to have a party. So we went to their house and had a meeting. And the first thing that this elderly black woman said as the meeting started was she said, don't worry about it. I'll show you how to do it. It's easy. And she became the teacher. Of, of the block parties and then on. So we really started out a lot with just getting people to know each other on the street. And you know, there's a, there's a fancy word for that that President Obama got in trouble using a couple of years ago, and that was community organizing. But that's what we were doing, was community organizing. We were getting people to know each other and to share their strengths with each other. And just through that, and I'll say there was a lot of details and complicated work here and there, and health things and all that. But within three years, we saw most of our drug dealers leave the neighborhood through simply getting people to know each other. Um, one particular drip lot party happened back at that elderly lady's uh, house. We actually had probably one of the worst drug dealers in Austin move on to our street. Um, and um, he was awful, a guy named John Ward, awful. And we were having fights out in the street. He was hiring 10-year-olds, 13-year-olds to watch each end of the street. We were working with the police, but the police were working with the FBI. And it's just this long, it can take two years to get somebody out like that. And we thought, we can't wait two years. We were desperate. And um, so just working on our street together, we were calling in license plate numbers. We were, we were just, and we were bugging him. We were just disrupting business, and eventually he moved out. Um.